Last time on the 4040. Many times in worship, a picture will pop in your mind. That's what it means to gaze on the, with the eyes of your heart. The Lord gave you an imagination for Him to really speak to you. But we kind of came in contact with some obstacles that we hadn't come in contact before. Oh no! No! <laughs> You really had to be on your game, which most people were. Most people were on their game that day. Um, so after we got camp set up, that night Diva was a little bit different. Everybody needs to go find a rock and that we had to hold it in our hand and we can't, couldn't let it go for any reason. So we knew something was you up. Guys, do you guys go get all your warm clothes? We are gonna do a pretty long hike. <laughs> this is not a joke, is it? Uh -oh. Your harness. I feel like I'm watching a movie, and we can't, are trying to figure out the ending. I know you guys are like, what's coming? What's coming? What's coming? What's coming? What's coming? We'll get there. And we go up to this rock cliff. Oh my god! Go off that swing. How are you guys doing? Oh, yeah. It's yeah. <laughs> you said it was awesome. The bottomless cliff is totally different. Oh, no. Is this actually cool? Yeah. Okay. I'm taking it back. What belongs to me? All right, team. Love you much. I'm done with the rock. There's no looking back. This is terrifying. This is a lot scarier when you're actually doing it. We're going to. Lower your body like this and then swing. Extra early. Does everybody have their harness and helmets? Oh no. <laughs> yeah, the climbing area we're going today is super popular. And so we've got to uh, get up early to make sure we uh, beat everybody else to the popular area. <laughs> so it's kind of a, a race yeah. uh, with everybody else. And so hopefully we got up early enough. Oh, I love. Uber days like this in the morning. That's Just the cram shell, which is the area that we climbed today. It's a fun area, and actually, what's cool about today, um, the reason why we really want to get this area is because everybody, the students are going to set up the climbs that we're going to climb on, so they've learned enough to start applying their skills and set up everything. It's a big day. And uh, we just had to, you know, get our, stake our claim on that. For some odd reason, all the dates everybody goes for on these, the, like this week. Oh yeah. Every year, if somebody is up there, to be honest. Knows it's the same thing. <laughs> they might. They were right behind us. Oh, I'm right. those strong guys this time. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> Way. And then what you do is you put your feet up against your butt 
like this, so you're sitting. I'll just throw this up. And shimmy your butt up. Like here. Turn around, there's a good foothold. Right here. You can just walk up. I'll help you. But if you want. It's great to have instructors that actually um, know the area that they're programming in. Um, I, you really feel safe and secure. Love it here. Very important. And we just got to do some a little bit of climbing before everyone else got there, which was a blessing. Good job, man. Thanks. So only if I moved oh. just a little bit faster, I would have had it. It was an awesome fall. Yeah, it was fun. It was awesome. It was a good one. Alright, Lori. Off the knee. Yeah. I just climbed drop, drop zone. Drop zone. And I got dropped. There you go, flip it over down. Once. Oh, no, it was a lot of fun. You weren't in the drop zone at all. No, not in the drop zone. I beat the drop zone. I got up there, Where is that right? and then I fell. <laughs> but it was like a five tenner, and I, I liked it a lot. The fall gave it some character. I had its peaks and values. It was great. Yeah, look at that. Watching as life passes by. Some people fast forward through it, racing to the end. There you go, Will. Nice. Boom. Here comes the chippy fire. Look, just look for good for more. Yeah. 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 Can we measure the difference we make now? So live in the moment. Live for today. Stand in your way, gone are the reasons of yesterday. Hi, baby. If you're ready to move in some way, let's go today. Sometimes we 
Yeah, I'm the yeah, drop zone on 510. One hand. My shoulders. Still. still messed up, so. <laughs> but it was a little, it was a little iffy, but ended up getting up. It was good. Very awesome. These guys are beasts. Yeah. Okay, did you fall? No. No, but I mean. Did you cruise up it? It's a yes or no question, Nate. I would like to hear your response. <laughs> yes. Off play? Play off. All right, you're fine. Clean. Basically, how I always try to get out of things. And Amy never lets me get out of things. But then afterwards, I'm kind of glad. So, thanks, pal. You were awesome. I'm proud of you. You owned it. But, I mean, I'm glad I did it. It's a fun climb, huh? Yeah. Did really well. I'm sorry, trust me, I see that it's, like, you really, like, do a lot more than I can say. Yesterday, so live in the moment, live for today. Tomorrow it may be too late. Lose all of the fear, stand in your way. Gone are the reasons of yesterday. Ready to move and don't. I'm actually from Fort Collins, which is, you know, only an hour drive from here. I never wanted to leave the Rocky Mountains because I loved them so much. I was like, why, why, why move away when you got all this wonderful, wonderful place? Like, because all my friends are like, I'm out of here, you know. And I was like, I want to stay. I love it here. I had a pretty, actually, awesome childhood. My family actually made a living in the beginning on trapping. I never realized how different it was until some of my friends started like asking me questions as a kid but like it was normal for me to like have all these traps hanging in the garage and you know like 50 dead beaver uh, hanging there and muskrat and coyote and, and uh, uh, I'd get you know it, as a kid like my dad would give me a little knife and I'd just start skinning a muskrat but it was an awesome uh, way to grow up because that kind of really actually started just my love for the wilderness so it was fun so we grew I grew up in a very like outdoorsy hunting and fishing family one of the greatest blessings in my life was I actually went to a church um, it was called Resurrection Fellowship and it was a big mega church and this church their children's program was amazing I, I remember being there and um, my pastor was just like you know, does anyone want to give their life to Christ? And when he said that, I just remember, like, I was, I was probably five, six. This is one of my first memories, you know. I remember, like, telling God at, like, that age, like, wow, you're real. Because I felt him inside of, like, in, in my chest. It was, the, it was the craziest thing. And I knew he was real. And I was like, God, I want to I follow you. And family life was good. Um, it, it, it was good. I, 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 was, I remember always just having an awesome time. My dad was always doing something crazy around the house. Well, I remember a couple things happening during, um, while, while being a child that uh, my parents kind of walked through and I remember thinking, man, this isn't, something's not right here. Something's not healthy. So r right now about 12 years old. So I remember coming back from kids camp and um, uh, that night, was when kind of, I, I call it just all hell broke loose in, in uh, my mom and dad's marriage. And, and I, I want to I preface, like, my mom is amazing. She is a woman of God. She, she really is a woman of God. And my dad, he is, wow, he, he is amazing. Both of them are my heroes. And unfortunately, uh, some of the stuff they had to walk through, um, my sister and I had to walk through in the midst of it. And so... Uh, pretty much um, the fallout happened a couple days before my birthday. So really kind of my mom and dad's marriage just fell apart. And um, the night it fell apart was an extremely harsh and hard night. Um, we went to the neighbors to spend the night. And, and I remember that night, literally, I, I remember this, this dialogue 
as a a 12 year old like I remember like feeling very hurt and feeling very alone and also scared because now my sister was with me my sister's a couple of years younger than me and she her and I she is one of my best friends but I remember like being at the neighbor's house and looking at my sister and being like how am I gonna take care of her you know there's no we don't I don't know what's gonna happen now I just felt like it was like my responsibility to take care of my sister I, I remember like kind of experiencing a whole bunch of emotions and like, I remember thinking this you know now's my chance if I want to rebel I'm gonna do it because this isn't right or I can uh, follow you Lord like that was my inner dialogue as a 12 year old I just it still kind of amazes me it's just his grace but I, I found myself at this pivotal season that I knew that would really transform my life my sister and I got on our knees that night and we just prayed and um it was very, it was a desperate prayer, you know, like we didn't know what was going to happen and we could hear what was going on in the, in our house next door. But I remember being on my knees and the Holy Spirit spoke to me and was like, Josh, if you let me, I'll make this beautiful in time. From age 13, you know, um, through my teenage years, it was, it was very bumpy. Um, but to be honest... Um, <laughs> and I don't know how to describe this but the Lord really took my word as a little boy pretty serious when I said I want to follow you and he just he just grabbed me and he's like I won't let you go and during those years of, of just my parents getting a divorce and going back and forth from mom's house to dad's house and just the potential of disaster like in my life it was like God was so good to me. I was he, he he like removed me from the circumstances and and literally distracted me with his goodness to the point where I was kind of immune to it all. And now I'm not trying to say it pridefully or it's it's so his grace and mercy, but that's he was so good. I was distracted by the war going on around me. Yeah. In the summers I'd spend a lot of time with my dad in the mountains. He would actually work as a park ranger. Um, in the summers, we lived at a place called Trapper's Lake in a wilderness area. It's a, it's a wilderness area. They, basically, there's this cabin in a wilderness area, and they designated it to be a wilderness area after the cabin was built, so the cabin is part of the wilderness area. So in the summers, he would, he would live there. So we would, we would literally uh, take canoes and canoe to our house. And um, part of my job was spearfishing brook trout <laughs> with him. Like, this is the dream. It was like every young boy's dream. So after the divorce, I mean, it was, I got a lot of quality time with my dad and my mom. But it was also hard. But the Lord just always distracted me. And even um, my stepdad stepped into the picture. And uh, at first, I, I didn't know what to do with it. I had my, my, my dad and then I had my stepdad. And both of them amazing in my life and actually Gary came to know the Lord um, after in high school I, I started a, I was a track and field athlete I was really stoked on pole vaulting and I found out I had a pretty good talent with pole vault um, to the point where it was like okay this is how I'm gonna pay for college I went to Colorado State University in my first year I was a what you call a preferred walk-on but then after that they put me on scholarship and it it, it just helped and so that was also an amazing season like our track and field team I made some of my best friends there and college for me was also just a major season of intimacy it, it was a lot of fun like never really fell into the drinking or the partying scene it just wasn't attractive to me it was a good season but I ended up wrecking my truck and so I was like well, I gotta go home now and <laughs> get a job and so um, I then started building water sewages and um, that was actually a pretty rough season because I was like, what am I doing with my life? I didn't know. I was working construction. And, um, in the summers, I worked at SROM, and in the winters, I went to school. And, and then the opportunity for SROM uh, opened up. And Andrew, Andrew was just like, he called me and was like, hey, um, why don't you... Uh, Pray about coming full time at SROM to be the 4040 program director. I already had d done 140. I was like, okay, um, I'll do another. So I came to SROM to lead a 40, and uh, Amy and I actually co-led a 40 together. 
and it was we were like peas in a pod. Uh, quickly became best friends, and um, <laughs> we tried our very best to like like this has got to be a professional relationship. We got to keep on task. <laughs> like we got we got to do this, you know. And um, so we, we did finish out the summer, and it was, it was an amazing summer. Uh, the 40 went well, and, but then afterwards, um, we were just like, okay, <laughs> what do we do with this? <laughs> because she was going to the Peace Corps, and I felt called to SROM, and so we laid it down. It didn't, it wasn't going to work out at that time. I mean, we can tell you our story later, but long story short, the Lord literally grabbed Amy and plopped her back in Laramie. Well, she got back from the Peace Corps, and then, <laughs> then she was off to Mozambique, Africa. <laughs> and so basically it was left like, if I don't go and get her, I'm not going to be able to uh, have the honor of being her husband. So, um, I, so that was when I went to Africa for a few months. And uh, we got married, and now we're just so thankful for where we're at. Like, we love leading 40s, um, probably our, even more than doing SROM, one of our greatest passions now is actually uh, raising up healthy spiritual families. If you were to ask me that, I'd be working at SROM, planning house churches, um, and living in Laramie, you know, three or four years ago, I'd be like, you're crazy. <laughs> but this, this is where I am and it's awesome. And so really, um, I mean, it's not a dramatic story, but, in, and I say it very humbly, the central theme of my life is just the goodness of God following me and preserving me and protecting me <coughs> and being distracted by Him. Today is day eight of the 4040, and uh, today is a day off, um, but we wanted to do a few things. So we had an optional um, traditional anchor school, traditional placement school. Austin uh, was willing enough to go out and teach us a little bit about trad climbing. It's, it's sort of like lead climbing, where you're climbing up and the rope is behind you. And Toenails. Okay. Toenails, they're lost. Toenails, lost. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what is this in line of our injuries so far? This is, uh, right I guess this would be the bloodiest. You're gonna get uh, back. Yeah, I stubbed my toe on the, on the invisible stump right there. And, uh, it, my toenail is now separated from my foot. But we're, we're gonna hope that it makes it. Put the gas yeah. part on top of the neosporin. Oh, that's tender. Tender room. Okay. Look at that professional. Oh, they don't. That was a perfect fold method right there. Are you sure you weren't born a wolfer? So when you go into the back country, always get a blister kit. Just in case your toenail comes off. Oh, worry, old buddy. Close to shoes. Where are we close to shoes? Watch out. Ah, watch out. watch out, killer stump. Watch out, guys, there's a stump right oh, there. Oh, yeah, this one. Oh, man, it's done my toe. Gosh. <laughs> it takes us to this little zone that's, like, kind of cool for trad climbing and um, teaches us the ropes. So we're just kind of having fun, chilling out here. We're going to do some crack climbing in a little bit. Some of those people are chilling out in camp, getting some bathing in, cleaning. It's a good day. So we are learning how to place traditional gear right now. Traditional gear is things like cams, that, nuts like these, nuts and stoppers. And these guys are all learning how to place it. They're practicing putting in their nuts and cams right now. Um, and we're just kind of going around critiquing and practicing uh, how to put this stuff in. Uh, that was a blast. Um, it was cool to learn new things. Um, and that's kind of like what I came there for. So learning how to place placements and trad climbing with nuts and cams. You have these little thingies, they're like clamps, sort of, 
you stick them into cracks and then they sort of expand and then you can hold yourself there like they get stuck. We're just practicing placing our bolt nuts here. And they're crazy. There's like huge ones that like go in big cracks and there's like little tiny, like little, little. And then if you can get it out, you get in there and you push it out with this guy. And the next thing you have to think about is the direction of pull, the direction of fall. Um, kind of like we were talking about earlier for you know equalizing anchors and stuff like that. It applies to placements as well, where you have your direction of fall. You want your placement to be facing your direction of fall, so the wire or the stem of the cam or whatever. So like if I am climbing a crack and I put my cam in like this, there's no way I can possibly fall up, right? It's going to pull it down. And so now all my pressure is pushing my my bottom cans in and pulling my top can my top wings out. You've got good surface area. They're even. Um, so, and the bottom ones that I was looking at, where they had they have that ability to move, the top ones are like perfect. And okay. the bottom ones keep on wiggling the top ones out. Got it. Would you place that first one, or would you try to find a new spot? I would find a new spot for that one because that would that would. Most likely, yeah. Okay. Well, that's good to know. So we don't want to have it. And you hook your rope in there, and it can like hold like a large man, like myself or Austin. Um, so it's pretty impressive. You want to come check out this anchor over here? Tasha and Will have built us a nice little three-point anchor here. We've got our master point down here and our knot here. Shelf here, a couple of legs, got it nice and equalized. Um, and we have three number two cans um, with great placements in here. They are all pretty bomber. Uh, really good surface area and all of these wings. Uh, they're all facing the right direction. Um, well cammed. I would definitely hang off this anchor. Yes! And um, then we get to try it out ourselves. Yeah, we're, we are in Friday's recess. Yeah, Friday's recess. This is this whole formation is called Nautilus. It's one of the most popular cracks in the video. Too. It's this hand crack, hand finger crack. It's really awesome. Austin, um, being the awesome climber that he is, he makes it look like the easiest thing in the world. Oh yeah. Oh no! You know, he just cruises up it, and like even before I got there, I'm just thinking like, how am I gonna get up this thing? Like it looks wicked hard, and you know, I'm like, all right, well, it's my turn to go at it, you know. And so I go up it, and it takes me like 30 minutes to do this climb. Like I am just struggling, inching my way up. Yeah, you are. Yeah, you are. Yeah, that's the start. Hey, I have one word for you. Enchilada. Te quieres? Te quieres enchilada? Enchilada. I'm just like, you know, it's just a moment I had to give it up to God, you know, like, it's, it's more about you, God, than my climbing, like, oh, well, you know, I, I, I didn't make it up. Matt, again, one of the best climbers, I think, in the, in the crew, one of them. There are other very talented climbers, but um, he gives it a try and just uh, just handles it like a champ. He's kind of like a little monkey, a little rock climbing, tool using um, monkey. Um, but then I got to do it a second time, and you know, only rested a few times, and it went much smoother, um, which was a blessing. Well, I know, and then I was like, yeah, and so then I was like, what is this? And they're like, it's chicken fried steak. And I literally, like, gagged a little bit, 
Because I thought it was like chicken and steak fried together. And I was like, sick out. I mean, and then you have to have chicken in the title. Like, because it's chicken fried, so you fried chicken. So it's good. Just, that's just so, seems wrong to me. Well, what's better, just fried steak? I don't know, like, uh, like steak on the grill? Yeah, yeah, how about regular steak? Hey, Tash, can you Maybe smile? chicken stuff with steak would be good. Is. What's wrong with you two yeah, types of turf and turf? How is that gross? It's like surf and turf. Yeah, it's it's turf and turf. See, this is why this climb is called deception. Because it looks like it's easier than it is. There it is. Huh? Want, way to go, girlfriend. Awesome. I don't want that. I don't want. Yeah, I had a really good day. Um, needed some downtime, some solitude. And uh, the Lord just really, I don't know, spoke to me about, I guess just all the blessings He's put in my life. And He's really gave me a reason to be thankful and kind of showed me a lot of just like simple work that's at my hand at home, you know? That, that, I feel like he just put like different people in my heart and stuff and it was really encouraging y'all look at the sky sorry oh, oh wow. Wow. wow that's beautiful red at night oh so beautiful this is beautiful that kind of goes along with what I was going to say today I just like I felt at peace today even with like my toe and stuff I like I still felt like it. It happens. Honestly, haven't ha felt at peace for a long time. So. Mm. I was washing my hands at the um, the faucet thing, and I just had this this kind of feeling come over me, and just this feeling like you're worthy. Mm. And that was just that's awesome. That was awesome. I don't know where it came from. It's just there's just a light breeze to, like through the aspens and stuff, and it just was like really symbolic to me. So it's just. Really cool. nice. Small still whisper. Today was just kind of awesome because it uh, made me kind of question my uh, my path. It was a good day. I had a really good day, and it was nice just to be able to like, you know, when you like think about your life inside your head a lot, and then you're like, maybe I'm not thinking so normally, and you just get some feedback. Hollywood type thing. I mean, just kind of that's where I wanted to go. Uh, make movies and stuff and you know the past week or so and, and including today just made me appreciate um, just where I've been in my career so far and where it is like right now and how awesome it is and well, I felt like uh, to be honest today was a major like testing day and this is what I felt like the Lord was speaking like You've been in a season, of, uh, you've been in the training ground, but now you're in a proving ground. Not like you're proving for the Lord, but there's a big difference between the training ground and the proving ground. And I'm moving into a season of really proving, the proving ground, where it's like it counts, it's not training anymore. <laughs> I was just writing this morning when my laundry was drying, and um, I just kind of like had this thought, like, God's saying, like, especially after last night, like, Rachel, if I'm going to be what I believe you're calling me to be, I'm gonna let this go. Right now, we're gonna transition into sharing our burdens and what this represents. Right where you're at is where I want you. Like, in like two ways, like, thank you for like following me and like coming to this place. And in another sense, like, who you are right now, like, just come to me with that. And that's all, that's all you need to do. Oh, yeah, I, been a lot of alone time today. When things like last night happen, a lot of times I don't think I really let it set in. I think, I mean, I, I love corporate worship so much, but you know, I think there's some things that God reveals to you in the secret, quiet places that are just really special. Um, well, I'm reading this book, and and it's weird because like, like even when I was in rehab and I was talking to Josh on the phone, like things that 
like people that I trusted in rehab, like Josh would say, like just all these like parallels were happening in my life, you know? And like a big one that's happening right now is about the law of sowing and reaping. And um, it's just like in like three different areas of my life, like it's kind of playing out. And so I pick up this book and there's like a whole chapter about it. Huh. And it was just crazy. And like, I just realized that like, I just kind of made like a commitment to the Lord today that like, like I'm going to be like the farmer that, that sows, you know, and like, I'm not going to be like the one that, ex that feeds off of other people that have been sowing, you know, mm -hmm. and so it's just really cool, like, and like one thing the book says is that like, today is the gift, you know, and like I can either like be lazy with the day or I can sow and wait in faithful expectation for the point of the harvest, you know, and that's just kind of what I choose, you know. But it was awesome to finish, send the, the climb I did today, it was like by far the hardest climb I've ever ascended. Yeah, work, like working as a missionary in North Africa, like, I don't primarily see myself as as like a tent maker is kind of the, the catchphrase. Like somebody who goes to be a missionary, they have a, another job that's kind of like their pseudo job, but they're really there to be a missionary. Like I see myself as being a real guide who just lives a life as a, as a believer there. Um, I don't want to like, I just don't think it's good to have like a dichotomy between the two. Like you are one person, you know, you, and uh, I just think it's kind of deceptive if you're, if you view yourself as two different things. So for that reason, like, I want to actually be legitimately able to guide and climb things and be able to lead other people up stuff and that kind of thing. So it's just encouraging to, to see myself moving forward in ability because I know that that translates into, into kingdom work. It's, ex it's encouraging to know that I can be what I, what I want, what I feel called to be. <laughs> I thought it was really awesome to see you persevere too, because it could have been easy to give up, but you rocked it. And yeah, I was really definitely. proud of just your perseverance. You know? You're right, like sometimes it's just a climb, and sometimes it's something inside that's like, you know, there's something bigger that you're going for. I just got some a good amount of tag time in the day, just want to just kind of get alone and just kind of resting his presence again. That was just really good. Just kind of. Yeah, just really not thinking about anything, just kind of just waiting, just waiting on him. Just, yeah, just kind of resting there. Just, he just kind of told me to just, just be still, you know, just be at peace. I'm not the kind of person that can just be super busy every day. Uh, I just need days to, to do, like, nothing. Just relax and uh, just think about, think about life and... Uh, I don't know a lot about my wife and how I miss her and stuff like that. So. Uh, a lot of teaching about teaching people rock climbing, uh, just because I love it so much. Um, so that was just really enjoyable for me today. Um, being able to teach you guys and see you learn what I enjoy. So well, I wanted to go learn trad stuff, which was fun, but I didn't want to go to the Nautilus because I knew Fridays was going to be there. <laughs> and I tried it once and failed, and I was like super frustrated that I couldn't climb it. But like, I guess God just kind of showed me at uh, dinner, there's like more here than just climbing. And like, it was nice just to be able to chill with everyone, and have like an extended time together, like cooking a full, like three course meal, and just like hanging out. So it was good. Uh, well, coming into this, climbing was a, a big thing for me. Uh, it's very, and like, in that it's more me seeking me proving myself and trying to be better and everything. It was much more of a pride thing. And I think that might have been starting to take priority over God. And since I came here, I like put, I felt that on my heart. And um, I've just been working on it. And today, climbing at Fridays. Um, and I've been praying this before every time I pray. Just, God, if your will is to have me get up this rock, let me get up this rock. And if I don't, well, then I guess you got something better for me. And... The first time at Clyde Fridays, it was Struggleville, um, and I think that was just God humbling me. And mm -hmm. every time I struggled, I just prayed, hey God, give me strength to push through this, but again, if you don't want me to do it, then uh, I won't do it. And then I get up a little bit farther, 
and then I try going on by myself like trying to get past that and then I just have to pray again and then I get up farther and that was really God like me relying on God through everything kind of thing and then once I got down you know just thought about it a lot and stuff and then after I retried Fridays and I think God blessed me with a, a lot better of a car. So hmm. that was great. I, I was walking today and I shared this with Anthony which was also a good thing being able to talk to Anthony on the way to get water but um, I just the thought came to mind like you know what does it mean to pick up your cross daily like what is this whole like we prosper in Christ but we also like join in his sufferings and then I thought of the pick up your cross and I think maybe the Lord said to me like right. it's about doing the like the little things and the big things that are that are for others and for the sake of king the kingdom that normally you wouldn't do on your own like you just wouldn't do for yourself and I think it's as simple as that and, and that's just my thoughts, and that's probably just a small piece of the picture, but I just felt like this, like God was giving me a grace, like, don't worry so much about, like, picking up these, like, carrying your cross as being this, like, huge burden, like, I have to make myself suffer, but that, like, it's about bringing, <sighs> it's about taking your eyes off yourself and just looking for what God has already done. It's just about doing the small things that the Lord is already doing. I think is what the Lord impressed on my heart. And that was a cool thing, because that's, that's easy. Next week on The 4040. So we're moving into the multi-pitch phase of the, the course, and it really uh, is the final for the last uh, eight days. We did what's called multi-pitch, which is another interesting variation of putting yourself in danger. Uh, I'm here at Surround doing 4040 because I'm trained to join a ministry called Maps Edge Ministries in North Africa. It's going to be a good time, I think. Maybe not. <laughs> okay, so we're making beautiful pie, apple pie, from and the scratch. We have some nice editors in the group because I'm on the injured list and can't climb. I was standing on the clamshell and all of a sudden my back just kind of seized up and it, it was really, really painful. Technically, we've got Sunday and Monday before you need to have your boots on. So I guess to we'll just wait and see them. Somehow the human being is supposed to climb up around the roof and back up. But the point of multi-pitch is really to foreshadow that that place of man. I gotta I gotta dig deep. I gotta if I don't feel like I can do, I'm gonna will my way through it and uh, and really take that next step of courage and doing the thing they never thought. Man, could do. you walk everywhere in this sport. <laughs> <laughs> What, what is she dancing for? And macaroni dance. How is it? Good? Macaroni dance. Macaroni you, dance. You got the uh mm -hmm. macaroni dance.